That guy in the Grundens, standing in that lobster road cockpit? Yeah, that's me. As a marine journalist for Power and Motor Yacht, I get to drive some of the newest, fastest, most beautiful yachts on the planet. No question. I know the recreational boating industry like the back of my freaking hand. But lobsters? Like they say in Maine? Yeah, not so much. Sure, a lobster roll is delicious. But when I would see a lobster pot during a sea trial, I'd picture something far worse. A foul prop and a tug of war contest with running gear. Not so much fun. But the fact is, these bugs are big business up in Maine. Eager to know more about the other side of the buoy, I called up the Down East Lobstermen's Association, which put me in touch with Captain Ethan Turner and his stern man, Devin Haskell. And before long, Dan and myself were working the bait station, hauling traps, and seeing what it takes to make it as a lobsterman for the day. Sure, this guy is cheesy now, but he wasn't always smiling. It's late July, the height of the busy season, as I drive up to Deer Isle, home to Stonington, the unofficial lobster capital of the world and ground zero for these ruby red crustaceans. From June until October, lobster men and women wake up at the crack of dawn and haul anywhere from a few to a few hundred traps. Unlike most fisheries, there aren't any commercial farms that can cheaply and easily provide a steady source of lobster. It is entirely too early in the morning as I step aboard Ethan's 37 foot lobster boat named Captain Jack and head out to pull some traps. While the diesel engine rumbles underneath us, we stop for a fuel, then make our way over to the local wholesale dealer to purchase some bait. With the Captain Jack sufficiently reeking of diesel and fish, we are finally underway. In the harbor, we pass some of the fleet at Mori. Ghostly, unmanned lobster boats rock gently in our jet black wake. Their transoms have been painted with names like Glory Bound, Rhonda Jean, and Defiant, suggesting fiercely independent, hardworking, family-oriented owners. Ethan comes from similar stock. A fifth-generation lobsterman, he can trace a lineage of seafaring captains on both sides of his family tree. He took to it almost immediately receiving his first lobster license at, get this, the ripe old age of six. Lobster fishing is a lucrative, if back-breaking, profession. Homaris Americanus 
accounts for roughly 75% of Maine's commercial fishery and brings in hundreds of millions of dollars. In fact, a recent economic study estimated that the, that the lobster supply chain contributes $1 billion to Maine's economy each year and generates 4,000 jobs for the state. That's a lot of fishermen and even more bugs, an affectionate name given to lobsters back when they were considered peasant food. Stern men like Devin are the heavy lifters of the enterprise who routinely haul up hundreds of the 40 pound traps and handle just about every clawed crustacean they bring aboard. To help lessen the load, it's not unusual for lobstermen to employ two or three sternmen. More hands aboard means less work, but also less profits. Well, again, it's a lot to learn, but this has been a really fulfilling experience standing toe to toe, shoulder to shoulder with both Ethan and Devin, learning the ropes, I'll never be able to look at another lobster roll the same, but I have a newfound appreciation for all the work, all the hard work that goes into it. For more on this story, stay tuned for an upcoming issue of Power Motoria. Check us out online at pmymag.com. There's more traps to pull from the sea. Again, <laughs> going full blown David Copperfield here. <laughs> Somehow that works. Yep. Didn't quite do it right. Oh, yeah, yep, that worked. Yeah, you gotta attach it too. Yeah, that makes sense.